If you have struggled to make really good Southern cornbread dressing, then this video is for you. This recipe is a combination of my mother's, my wife's, and her aunt's, and it is absolutely the best I've ever tasted. And I've eaten a lot of dressing. It's always the hit and always requested at any Thanksgiving gathering, whether it be my family or her family, everybody wants her to make this dressing. It's not difficult to make, time consuming, but not difficult. But this video will show you step by step how to make wonderful Southern cornbread dressing. We're gonna do five pans of cornbread, which will be 10 packages of cornbread. And I'll show you the packages in a minute so you can see what I'm talking about. Now this is the cornbread mix that we use this year. In past years we have done, um, we, uh, we really like using the Cracker Barrel mix, but this is something that her aunt suggested, the uh, Morrisons. Her aunt uses this and swears by it, whatever, but had I gone to Cracker Barrel, we I would have got it. some Cracker Barrel cornbread mix because it is good. That's two bunches, two stalks, two bunches of celery chopped up. We're cutting up two large onions. And these are pretty good size onions, almost softball size. Now we're making a big, big batch. So you can cut this in half, cut it in thirds, whatever you think is best for you. All right, now she's sauteing the onions and the celery. Onions and celery in a stick of butter each. Saute them until soft, I guess. Translucent, I believe they call it. Okay, she is through sauteing. The onions are just a little bit brown, translucent, but they're a little brown. They've been sauteed in that stick of butter as well as the uh, celery. We're ready to start combining stuff. You'll break the cornbread up, crumble it up. So you'll want to put 12 slices of white bread in this batch, toasted and crumbled up along with the cornbread. This is just the cornbread and the breadcrumbs, the dry ingredients. Mixing up good, breaking up the big chunks, anything she may have missed. What she normally does is just put a one of our TV trays in the middle of the kitchen. We don't have a bar right in the middle, so we do that. Fold it over, looking for big chunks. Mixing the breadcrumbs in with the cornbread. Now she start putting the veggies in, the celery and the onions. sauteed onions, fold it together, mix it up. Still pretty dry, there's juice from the butter, but it's still basically fairly dry. All right, we're putting in poultry seasoning. Again, we're making a huge batch here, so you will cut it down accordingly. That was about what, a tablespoon? Mm -hmm. about Probably a, a little bit more. Maybe a little more than a tablespoon. To start with, and then they have to do to taste it. Some of this will be to taste. The sage, the poultry seasoning, that will be to taste. Salt and pepper. Poultry seasoning has sage in it, so we won't put as much sage. I'm not a big fan of sage. Sometimes she doesn't, but other people that make dressing get way too much sage in it, for me. Here's sage, she said, a little hard to find this year. Sage. I had to get an off-brand. Again, sage is gonna be to taste. Some of you probably like a lot of sage. I am not that person, but. Not quite a tablespoon. All right, that's about three quarters maybe of a tablespoon for right now. She may add more later. I am the taste tester on this as a general rule. 
Mix it all up and then she's gonna add salt and pepper to it. She's gonna put a tablespoon of salt for right now. That may seem like a lot, but it's really not considering how big a, how big the pan is here. Black pepper, just regular ground black pepper. Probably a little less than a tablespoon. Again, for now. It may get more later if the taste test demands. Mix it up thoroughly. All right, Swanson's chicken broth goes in. This is a, uh, how big a container would you say? 32 ounces. 32 ounces, so it's a quart of chicken broth. Is that what it's called, chicken broth? Mm -hmm. Or chicken stock? I put both. In the chicken broth and yeah. stock and chicken broth. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's chicken stock. What was the other one? Broth? Okay, now we got chicken stock. They can use both or they don't have to use. You can use one or the other or you can use both. Thirty-two ounces, also quart. Still pretty dry. Gonna need some more, I'm sure. Second one of the chicken broth. Second quart. Starting to get a little sloppy, soupy, still pretty dry though. And that is the second stock or broth? Stock. All right, now we're getting close. Flavors are starting to marinate with each other. Starting to smell like Thanksgiving. Now you probably don't think this looks anything like dressing because it's not baked. It's pretty soupy, but it turns out to be wonderful. And this is Southern dressing, but even you Northern folks can make this. We won't get my okay, She's gonna put some cream of chicken soup in it, but we didn't have the small can, so she's gonna put about half of one of these big cans. So one small can, regular size can, of cream of chicken soup. This is one of those family size things. So she's gonna put about half of that in there. Cream of chicken soup. Okay, she boiled four eggs, hard boiled eggs, chopping them up, mincing them up in small pieces. And we'll be adding that. And she'll be adding that to the- They will add more probably. You don't think that's gonna be enough? Mm -hmm. No, it'll, for people that like hard boiled eggs. Yeah, if you really like hard boiled eggs, maybe you want more. So this is again to taste but it does help, it does make it more flavorful. So chopping those up, we'll add those to the mix. Okay, here are the eggs chopped up, adding them to the cornbread mixture with the veggies, everything else in it that we've already shown you. Stirring that up. What I did not show you is she added another, about a half tablespoon of um, salt and pepper. Is that all? Sage, a little more sage. A little more sage. 
Again, it's a taste. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a taste. And at this point, when you get these incorporated real well and let them uh, sit for a few minutes or something, then you'll want to do your final taste. And then you'll decide if it needs more salt, more pepper, uh, more sage. You may like more sage. Um, and, and if then, they don't like it as sweet, then don't use sweetened cornbread. Yeah, I love the sweet cornbread. No, but I you, understand. You won't like that because I put two of them in there. I love it. No, you won't. I've never met sugar I didn't like. Anyway, uh, but you may want to use regular cornbread mix and and not the, uh, you know, not something like Jif Jiffy or something like that. That would be sweet. Okay, we did a taste test. She's putting a little bit more of the um, cream of chicken soup. But at this point, you can put more salt, more pepper, more sage put more poultry seasoning in it if you want to she says this doesn't need it beating six eggs and then pouring them in the mix holding them in and yes these are raw eggs and at this point I would still do a taste I would still do a taste test if you're scared of raw eggs you don't need to do one do your taste test before you do this but I ain't scared of no raw eggs. These are my eggs. These are my, my girls laid these and they don't lay a bad egg. But uh, stir it up, do your taste test, and then we're gonna get ready to bake it up. Okay, she bought some aluminum pans. These are just use one time throw away, although they're about $8 a piece now. Um, and we'll um, pour the mixture in there and then we will leave it overnight in the refrigerator. She's gonna spray it with Pam Very to lightly, lightly Because spray. it makes its own oil. Just lightly spray it. And she's gonna put this in the refrigerator overnight. And that's normally the way she does it, but it's normally because she does all this after work. And then the next morning she bakes it so it'll be hot for Thanksgiving. But if you're gonna do it all in one day, then you can put it directly in the pan and directly go into baking. Okay, she's ladling it in the pans. And just basically dividing it between the two pans. Again, two 10 by 15 pans. And again, this is two big pans of dressing. You may want to just do one pan for your family. This is going to be a huge family. So keep that in mind. We used five pans of cornbread, which were 10 of those packages of cornbread to make these two. So here they are in the pan. They will bake in the oven for 45 minutes to an hour. Just watch it at 350. But just watch it and when it gets kind of golden brown on top you may want to check and see if it's feels like i guess it feels like cornbread would be would feel <laughs> you will check it just like you would a pan of cornbread correct yes yes okay so if there's not mushy in the middle it's probably done okay she's going to tell you one little step here when it's cooked Take a fork and just start fluffing it all the way around, all the way around, and make it real fluffy. Because if not, it'll be like a cake. You so don't want you, that. When you're talking about making it fluffy, you're talking about digging all the way down in there? Just whatever. Just <laughs> dig it. <laughs> a woman will know how to make it fluffy. This might be a man making this. Well, okay. We're, we're handicapped. To, we're have to we're limited learn. on that. You'll have to learn to fluff it. Fluff it, guys. Fluff it. All right. When it gets done, fluff it. So it doesn't turn out to be a, a big brick, a big brick of dressing. Fluff it. And it will fluff up nicely. So here's a picture of it. As soon as it comes out of the oven, you can see it's golden brown on top. And just beautiful, just like you would expect it. And then here's a picture of it after it is fluffed up.
That's what my wife meant by fluffing it up, is going down in it and just tearing it apart, basically, and making it ready for uh, the giblet gravy that most people put on it. We call it giblet gravy down here in the South, uh, but it's a gravy uh, that we probably need to do a video on and haven't done one. But anyway, this is what it looks like fluffed up and with a little gravy on it, serve it. It is magnificent. And the video shows you step-by-step step how to do it. Again, this is two huge pans. You may only want to make one pan. If so, just cut these ingredients in half. But uh, it's going to be so good that one pan may not be enough. Hope you've enjoyed it. Do me a favor, and if you have a recipe that is different from this one, put it in the comments below. Uh, I love to get different ideas, and my wife would probably like to see exactly how other people make their dressing. If you use different ingredients, or if you use uh, uh, a specific kind of cornbread that you really like and have found to be good, let me know in the comments section below what you think of this, what you think of dressing in general. If you're from, if you're up north, you may not know what we're talking about here, but you are missing out on a southern favorite. All right, hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you've enjoyed Mrs. TP2 showing you how to make grandma's southern cornbread dressing. Try it, and we're gone.